Talking with the experts. In episode 554 with Divya Ramachandran, discover how emotional clarity can make hard conversations easier. Learn strategies for impactful leadership. If you if you can kind of picture this image of you and your emotion are, are getting into a car. You know, you have to get somewhere. You, you need something. This conversation, you're getting into a car. Um, one possibility is that the emotion gets into the driver's seat and you're in the back seat of that emotions driving, right? So when we have this anger and we're not acknowledging it, what happens is it gets into the driver's seat. We're making choices. We're, we're acting emotionally, right? We're, we're making our choices. Everything we're seeing is driven by that emotion. Well, that's not what we want here. But at the same time, if we're in the driver's seat and we throw the, throw the emotion back into the trunk of the car, right, and lock it up, well, it's pounding on there and yelling and screaming to get out. So we can't fully focus either. So what you really want is a relationship with your emotions where you can imagine I'm here driving. I'm in control. My emotions right here next to me in the passenger seat. We're in this together. I get that you're here. It's okay that you're here, but I'm still going to make choices that are the right ones for me. Talking with the experts. Are you looking to elevate your brain? Advertise with Talking With The Experts and reach a global audience. With over 36,000 monthly listeners, your message will resonate with a dedicated and engaged community. Hosted by Rose Davidson, our podcast has ranked in the top 100 in Australia and the top 20 in New Zealand. Boost your brand visibility, connect with potential customers and drive conversions. Our listeners are eager for innovative solutions and expert insights. Let your brand be the one that they trust. Are you ready to grow with us? To learn more about advertising opportunities, contact us today at talkingwiththeexperts.com. Talking with the Experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com.au. Talking with the Experts is all about business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. Today, my guest is Divya Ramachandran, and we're going to be discussing how we can lead with clarity and how to make those hard conversations easy. Now, Divya is... um, uh, uh, she has a PhD um, and is a distinguished leadership coach, transitioning from a successful career in tech to empowering leaders at tech startups. She was born in South Asia and she immigrated to Salt Lake, Salt Lake City in Utah. She has navigated the complexities of identity and excellence from a young age. Her academic journey led her from computer engineering to a profound discovery at the University of uh, Berkeley, where she realized her passion for using technology to address human needs. This epiphany coupled with a transformative experience in executive coaching redirected her uh, path towards leadership coaching. Uh, Divya uh, specializes in guiding tech startup leaders, leveraging her expertise in energy awareness, cognitive behavioral coaching and emotional intelligence to foster trust, connection and effective communication within teams. Welcome, Divya, and thank you so much for joining me here on Talking with the Experts. Thank you so much for having me here. It's really an honor. You've had quite a journey from, um, you know, where you started to, to where you are now. Can you just let us know a little bit about that journey? Yes, sure. So I like to think about that journey as this necessary, um, but uh, unintentional, but probably the right thing, a journey from technology to people. Um, 
like you described, I have a background in technology and it was actually when I was studying at Berkeley doing my graduate school that I first realized, wow, I'm really much more motivated by problems that pe about people that relate to people than the technology itself. And so I started um, searching to find out what was going to be what would speak to me the most. Uh, and that's when I discovered human centered design and under basically this process of how do we really get deep on understanding and designing products that really specifically address a human need. Uh, and so I started a career there in user experience design, working at multiple tech startups. So I'm, I live in the Silicon Valley and in California, startups all around. So that's where I really learned a lot of those techniques and eventually moved on to more of the business side, thinking more about the people, the market, et cetera, as a product manager um, and was leading the product team at a AI based startup. This was um, six years ago um, and realized uh, while I was there that I, I needed some support figuring out kind of how am I, how am I stepping into this leadership role and you know, having problems? We were having a hard time with the company. So there were a lot of different challenges we were dealing with. So it was at that time that I worked with an executive coach and she introduced me to just this whole new world, a whole new world of a skill set that I hadn't really considered. Everything had been quite accidental, just learned on the job up until then. And so just realized there's so much we can do intentionally to, to understand ourselves and show up in a different way and a better way to motivate people around us. Uh, and so one thing led to another. I left that job quite burnt out, sure that I needed to do something else sure that I wanted to do something on my own, unclear on what that was. And so just had this thought in the back of my mind, like maybe coaching, maybe I want to pursue this a bit more. And so I signed up for a course on the first day. And I signed up for a course just thinking, let me try it out. I could just, I could try the first module and learn the sign up for the rest later. Well, that first day it was crystal clear to me that this is what I wanted to do. It just, it hit me like, you know, a bolt of lightning. Um, this is how I want to be, continue to be involved in the tech world or in, in, involved with business owners, business leaders. Uh, this was the skill set that I wanted to be able to bring. And I really wanted to be able to go deep with people and help them really unlock their full potential by um, working with them on their leadership challenges. Yeah, emotional clarity and leadership and communication is really important. Um, you know, we we see a lot of times that leaders um, aren't communicating in the best way so that their message is understood by those that they are communicating with. So, um, you know, how can we use this emotional clarity to, uh, you know, to be better understood? Yeah, that's a great question. A lot of the time it's, it's kind of a nobody will... Um, Everyone will agree with the fact that we need to speak clearly. Look at me uh, stumbling on my words as I say this, but to communicate clearly is really an important leadership tool that we we want to have, right? We want to bring people along for our ideas. We need to give feedback. We need to have hard conversations, all kinds of things, motivate. Um, but that's really just, if we think about it, almost like a pyramid it's, like it's or an iceberg, right? It's just at the tip of the iceberg is how we're speaking. There are a lot of layers below that that need to actually happen first. And so I like to think about it almost as if you think about, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if you think about a model like that, where we're looking at a triangle where communications at the top, well, the very bottom foundation is emotional clarity. So it's understanding, how do I feel about this situation? Am I bringing anxiety and fear and regret or dread to this conversation? Let's just, for an example, let's say you have to give feedback to a peer. You're supposed to be collaborating with them. They don't seem to be pulling their weight. You need to have a hard conversation with them. You want to stay friends with them. You don't want this, this to ruin the relationship. At the same time, you don't want to be doing all their work for them, right? So it's just this, you've got this push and pull. So we want to start by just getting clear on how we feel about it. Because if we don't, we're going to do one of two things. We're going to probably for a while tolerate the behavior because we just, we're just thinking, oh, let's just, let me just, let me just do it myself. I don't want to go that guy. I don't want to go there. I'm just going to, you know, take it on myself. And we'll do that and we'll do that, we'll do that. At some point, we're going to get to a breaking point. And then that emotion is going to come out in some other way. We're going to either get very angry or get turned into a bigger conflict. It's going to escalate or we're going to feel so resentful that at some point we burn out. Something or the other is going to happen. But if we start with that emotional clarity and we just tell ourselves, okay, this is how I'm feeling. This is why I'm torn between do I want to maintain this relationship or do I want to, uh, you know, create a better working condition for myself, you know, do something that's better for my career growth. When we look at that, 
then we get to a place where it's like, oh, I have a decision to make. And so I think that's the next step is clarity of decision. What is the choice that I'm going to make? Am I going to prioritize this relationship and keeping them happy? Or am I going to prioritize this step for my career? And when you've articulated the decision, often it's it becomes more clear. The answer becomes more clear. Like, yeah, I really need to think about the longer term uh, concern, which is around my my career. So now we've got that clarity of decision. When we do that, sometimes we're saying, OK, so that means I'm going to go talk to them. Right. And so we might just go and pick up the phone or, you know, ping them on, on online or something like that, text them quickly and say, hey, we need to talk. Now, if we do that without stopping to think, sometimes what we can do is go and call them and tell them something, but we don't really know what the impact of that conversation is going to be. So first, we need to that the third step here is getting clarity of your goal. What is my goal? What is the change I want to see after having had this conversation? Right. So now we're moving into like we have made our decision to say something. What is the goal? So in this case, it might be well, for the remainder of this project, these are my expectations. This is what I'm going to do. This is what you're going to do, you know? And so we kind of, we've set some expectation around what we want to do next. That goal is completely in our control. I can say what I have to say. They may feel some way, but I can say what I have to say. So if, as you can see, like, as we layer this on, once you've gotten clear on how we feel, made that decision, cl clarified the goal, the conversation almost becomes very straightforward. It's like, okay, I need to have this conversation. This is what I need from the conversation. Now, now suddenly that conversation is becoming easy. So that's how I see the link between emotional clarity and speaking with clarity. A really great um, um, outline of how, you know, we can get the two together and so that, you know, we're not communicating in such a way that it, that we are being misunderstood. And once we get that emotional clarity in place, I think that the, the rest of it falls into place. It sometimes as you pointed out, you know, someone's not pulling their weight in, in the team and, you know, and it's making um, making you angry and, you know, you project that when you are communicating those needs uh, or those ideas to, to the person that, you know, is affecting the teamwork. So how can we, you know, make those conversations a lot easier? I mean, I know you've outlined the link, but, you know, how can we as, uh, as the leader um, communicate in such a way that those conversations become easier as we go on and we don't have to think about them so much and they become second, second nature. Yeah. So I think that a great conversation when you're in, when, when there is a conflict, some kind of a difference of opinion, um, a great conversation is one that aims to increase mutual understanding. So there's two parts to it. One is I'm going to put a lot of effort into understanding where you're coming from. And I'm going to give you everything you need to understand where I'm coming from. And those are almost two separate skills. One is really about listening without judgment. And the other one is clarifying kind of sort of what I was talking about earlier, clarifying what exactly do I need and where am I coming from? And a lot of that has to do, in order to do both of those, we have to have that a healthy relationship with emotions. Right? We can't yeah. be fearing the other person's emotions. We can't be resisting them. We can't be doing that to our, ourselves or our emotions either. So it's so easy to just be like, oh, they get too defensive. Oh, you're too emotional. Like that kind of stuff, stuff comes all the time. But everyone's emotional. We're all, we're human beings. So we're carrying emotions no matter what we do. So those are, those are the main skills that have to be nurtured and they can all be learned. But those are the main skills that can be nurtured and understood to really have conversations that, that go a lot better and maintain the relationship at the same time. It's really important um, to, you know, to to um, hold back the, the the anger. Even if you're feeling angry, you can still project yourself in a in a in a better way, so that um, you know, the anger isn't peppered throughout the conversation. And sometimes it can be a little bit difficult because you're right. We are human. We are emotional beings, um, and you know, and and sometimes too. Um, you know, words can be misunderstood or, you know, the whole conversation can be misunderstood. And so active listening, and if we teach that to our team members as well, active listening is is really important so that you're getting the idea of the message and, you know, asking questions throughout the conversation so that, that the message is clearer and, and received in the way that it was intended. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think asking questions is so important and asking questions curiously is is so important as well. And what you were saying there about kind of that anger getting peppered peppered through that conversation, it's, it's so true. And I, I like to think about it. If you think about a metaphor, if you if you can kind of picture this image of you and your emotion are, are getting into a car, you know, you have to get somewhere, you, you need something, this conversation, you're getting into a car. Um, one possibility is that the emotion gets into the driver's seat and you're in the back seat of that emotions driving, right? So when we have this anger and we're not acknowledging it, what happens is it gets into the driver's seat. We're making choices, we're, we're acting emotionally, right? We're, we're making our choices. Everything we're seeing is driven by that emotion. Well, that's not what we want here. But at the same time, if we're in the driver's seat and we throw the, throw the emotion back into the trunk of the car, right, and lock it up, well, it's pounding on there and yelling and screaming to get out. So we can't fully focus either. So what you really want is a relationship with your emotions where you can imagine I'm here driving, I'm in control, my emotions right here next to me in the passenger seat. We're in this together. I get that you're here. It's okay that you're here, but I'm still going to make choices that are the right ones for me. And I, I like to kind of think about that relationship in that way. Yeah, no, that's a, a really good point, you know, that um, you've got to be in control of your emotions, at, you know, when you're trying to communicate effectively with others. And, and sometimes it's not it's not easy because the emotions just, you know, take over and 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 only trouble with that is that you often say things that um, are said in the heat of the moment and not, um, you know, and they're regretted it, you know, after the conversation's been finished. So um, how can we, I guess, better stop that from happening? Because we, we've all done it. We've all said things that we've regretted um, mm. because, you know, we've said something in the heat of the moment. But how can we rein that in and 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 better control the emotion at that time? Yeah, such a great question. The first bit of it is really around building awareness. And I mean, this is this is a lifelong process. <laughs> so even as I say it, I know how much I have to work on it. My clients have to work on it. Everyone has to work on this, right? But it's building awareness around being able to actually accept the fact that we feel angry at a, at a given point, right? So we want to be both acknowledge like, hey, I'm angry, which sometimes it's very hard to do. Because the last thing you want to do when you're when you're you know feeling all of that is stop and say like oh I'm angry right um but but even just to notice that that's there and so sometimes that's like through physical cues right like we feel our heart racing or our face getting hot or um our teeth or jaw clenching our jaw or something so really getting used to just different signs that are telling us like hey there's emotion that's that's rising here and it's okay and and I guess the second step is then to say it's okay for me to feel this way. So that's huge. You want to be able to notice it because just noticing it itself kind of de-intensifies it. But when you say, it's okay that I'm angry or it's okay that you're angry, right? Anytime we validate and recognize like, of course I'm angry because this person has not been pulling their weight or this, you know, this manager has not recognized my um, abilities and is not, you know, is not giving me a promotion. They may have their reasons, but I'm still angry. When we validate that emotion, that's what allows it to pass. And so it's so important that we do these two steps first, is just acknowledge that it's there and then accept or validate that emotion and allow it to pass. And once it's done that, then we're in a position where we can actually make that choice where we say, okay, okay, anger, come sit in the car next to me. You can come along with me, but I'm going to drive and I'm going to make the choice that's best. And so it's, I think it's just those steps of like building that awareness over time, but also being comfortable with it, saying it's, there's so many ways in which we're taught culturally, socially, uh, in so many different ways that it's not okay to be angry. It's not okay to be sad. It's not okay to be disappointed, all these things. So most of the time we're taught to kind of shove it under the rug and focus on the positive, right? But building that relationship where you can say like, of course, yeah, it's totally understandable that I'm angry. And this becomes an extremely important tool then to use when you're talking to somebody else. And if they're getting defensive for us to just for a moment be like, well, of course they're getting defensive. I'm giving them hard feedback. I don't need to stop them from getting defensive. I don't need to get agitated that they're getting defensive. I just need to be okay. Like, and even being able to bring those, bringing those emotions, labeling them in conversation can do wonders. To so just be like, I'm feeling really angry about this and I understand, or I understand why you are. Yeah, that, that's really important, you know, from, um, 
a self awareness uh, perspective. But you know what? How can we handle um, the other person when you know we are trying to communicate really clearly and and they're becoming defensive or they're becoming angry? How do we deal with that? Um, and you know, still keep ourselves in check. Yeah, so so hard. <laughs> I just want to acknowledge it's extremely hard to do. But I think curiosity is always your friend. Um, as long as we can be curious, we're not um, we're not judging the fact that they are they are getting um, emotional or <laughs> they're getting driven by their emotions. They're getting angry. They're getting all these things, right? So if we just stop and try and understand, first of all. If we call it out for them and say, I can tell that this is really frustrating you, or I can tell my feedback or what I have to say is really frustrating you, just saying that itself can actually de-intensify the emotion. Sometimes they might react to it and say, well, I'm not angry or something like that. But you can just like, what you know is that they're just processing that anger. That's what's happening right now. But for us to have that kind of openness and curiosity and understanding that, that yes, yes, they, they have a perspective here too. It's not just mine. And I want to understand their perspective. And so let me get as curious as possible. Like, what is it about it that I'm saying that's frustrating you the most? What aspects of it are you not agreeing with? And the more curiosity we build, bring, our energy will shift their energy. And it might take time. Approaching any conversation the way I'm, the way I'm talking about will probably take longer than just going in there and putting your hands on your hips and yelling at them, right? Um, it that has other uh, there there's there are drawbacks to that, but it sometimes is faster. Sometimes it's faster. This will take more time. So maybe that whole conversation you never get your point across, and all you're doing is trying to understand their anger. The next time around, that would have they they're going to be in a better place to compromise with you or talk to you about mm -hmm. a collaborative solution. Yeah, compromise is the key word, I think, um, when there's those hard conversations. I think you really need to compromise on, on um, you know, how you speak, how you your body language as well, because body language has a lot to do with communication. And, um, you know, you could be very nice and easygoing and whatever, but your body language can, can show that you're not... Um, portraying what your voice is, is is saying. So that is really a, an important factor in this whole communication thing. Yes, absolutely. Which is why um, it's so hard to communicate. So many uh, companies and so many people interact via just text, uh, especially when everyone's remote and that kind of thing. And it makes it, I mean, just there's so much more there's so much more potential for things going wrong so those are the moments where you want to pick up the phone or ideally get on a video call or meet in person if that's an option um there's nothing like it to just sort of reset and re remind one another oh we're both human we're both coming from somewhere there's you know there's something uh there's something more to this person than the words they're typing Absolutely, yeah. Our oh, written communication is the worst type of communication. I think it's. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I sent an email to somebody, and I thought that the communication was clear and concise, and you know, um, non-judgmental. And then I get an email back saying, you know, that why am I doing this and that and something else, and that's not what I intended at all. And then the more I try to, you know. Um, make them understand the worse the situation gets and my goodness it's like you know it, it's it has ended um, business relationships because of um, mm -hmm. misunderstood uh, text um, and yeah. Yeah, it, it is a lot better to get onto a video call or even a phone call where they can hear your voice um, mm -hmm. and to you know to try and alleviate the fears that they may be having or, or the the judgments that they're having on that mm -hmm. written conversation that's right yeah yeah happens to me all the time as well I completely agree yeah <laughs> yeah um Divya um a really great conversation I'm absolutely loving this where can people find you um if they want to you know work with you or find out more about what you can offer them yes um so I'd love to connect with people on LinkedIn that's kind of the main place where I do um do love to connect so Divya Ramachandran is my name and you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I also uh, have 
my email address, you're welcome to email me directly, coach at divyalalitha.com. That's D-I-V-Y-A-L-A-L-I-T-H-A.com. That's also my website is divyalalitha.com. Um, and over there, there's an opportunity to sign up for my newsletter if you're just kind of interested in hearing a few tidbits about this um, or um, connect with me directly. So I'd love to I'd love to talk to any of your um, any of your audience uh, who might be interested in talking more about these things. You're lovely. And you've got a, a hard things guide. Tell us a little bit about that. I do. I do. So I have a hard things guide that will walk you through um, some of these, the, the frameworks that we've talked about today and really um, help you understand uh, how it is that you can um, step through these different stages of getting from emotional clarity to communicating um, communicating with clarity. And so that is that is a gift for you and your audience um, to please feel free to download and I hope it can help support you through some of your hard conversations. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you so much. Divya, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us today. It's been a quite a pleasure. It's been a wonderful pleasure for me as well. Thank you for having me, Rose. Bye for now. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time.